Stop That Pickle by Peter Armour. It was lunchtime when Miss Elmira Deeds waddled into Mr. Adolph's deli. I would like a pickle, please, she said. Why, certainly, said Mr. Adolph, wiping his hands. He unscrewed the lid to the giant pickle jar and looked inside, but there was only one fat pickle left floating in the brine. Mr. Adolph tried to spear that pickle with the long fork, but each time he did, the pickle swam to the other side of the jar. That pickle did not want to be eaten. Mr. Adolph was rather embarrassed by this turn of events, and he began to dig around the drawer for some tongs. As he was doing this, the pickle climbed out of the jar on its little green legs, darted across the counter, and ran out the door. Eek! said Miss Elmira Deeds. No one had ever seen a pickle move quite so fast. Stop that pickle, said Mr. Adolph, giving chase. Down the street ran the pickle. Mr. Adolph quickly pooped out and had to sit down on the curb, reclining on a nearby plate. A peanut butter and jelly sandwich heard the alarm and leapt up. Now everyone knows that a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is not the fastest sandwich in the world, but it does have great endurance. The sandwich chugged after the pickle. Stop that pickle! It shouted. As the pickle and the peanut butter jellies and sandwich passed a bake shop, a fat braided pretzel climbed down from the counter and stumbled into the street. It ran a few steps behind the peanut butter sandwich, scattering sesame seeds as it went. Stop that pickle! cried the pretzel. Enjoying the sun on a nearby tree, a lovely green pip and apple heard the pretzels cry, and it shook itself loose to join the chase. It rolled down every hill that it could. A crowd of toasted almonds, seventeen of them, came skittering down the street. Where they came from is anybody's guess. Stop that pickle! They peeped in their almond voices. A scurrying crowd of raisins and a cake donut came right behind. The last to join the parade was a cool bottle of grape juice and an elegant ice cream cone sprinkled with chocolate. They had all one thing to say. Stop that pickle! But the pickle was too fast for all of them. He had a great time zigging and zagging and thumbing his green pickle nose at his pursuers. Sometimes he would just stop and read the newspaper to give them a chance to catch up. Where they... They were the slowest food he'd ever seen. On and on went the chase. It seemed like it would never end when, oof, rounding the corner, the pickle collided with a young boy. Stunned, the pickle lay there, and the collision had knocked the wind right out of him. Quickly, all the pursuers gathered around. You caught the pickle! You caught the pickle! They all cried to the boy. What should I do with him? he asked. Why, eat him, of course, they shouted. They were all a bit besides themselves. He's just a silly pickle. Now, it just so happened that the boy had been playing hard all morning long, and somehow had misplaced his lunchbox. He was terribly hungry. He looked at the pickle, who immediately began to cry briny tears. And the boy had a better idea. He ate the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, the fat braided pretzel, the lovely green pip and apple, the seventeen roasted almonds, the handful of raisins, the cake donut, and drank the bottle of grape juice. Finally, he polished it off with the ice cream cone. The only thing left was the pickle. The boy looked at the pickle and shook his head. Who ever heard of eating a pickle after ice cream? Stop that pickle!